But if I capture the essence of the mini company, it's fairly simple. We work together as a team. You know, there's a mini company here and a mini mini company here. Each group is a mini company. To the, even to the level each individual is a mini company within the group too. So each entity should have a mission why they come to work. It may not be easy to capture in three minutes, but uh, you might want to work with the group to figure out why you come to work so that, uh, okay, your reason is so, and your reason is so, and so, it's all different, right? Because we have a different background interest. But if we co communicate each other, we may start to see the essence that you can have a common purpose of coming together. And if you have a good leader, good team, they have the common purpose, like a soccer team. <laughs> they can, making money is one of them, but they may be much more than just making money. They find joy in doing it, and the money may be the result of their great performance too. So you find um, the mission collectively. It may take some time. I think it may be meaningful. But in doing the mission, clarifying the mission, you also need to understand who are the customers and suppliers, bankers, employees. So there's a relationship of the mini company at the center and how they relate to each other. So I often suggest to draw a picture, the mini company, and arrows going this way and that way, and some arrows coming back from the other entity. One interesting case that happened, this is 25 years ago, I still remember, is that this Spanish company did do this exercise, the mission, customer supplier, relationship, and so forth. So I went to the accounting and finance office, and I saw the chart in the center, and there are other people, like a board or CEO, the department, da 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 da. And what's funny, and I couldn't believe it, is that all the arrow is going to them, and no arrow is going out. <laughs> because they think their job is to collect the information and maybe there may be one arrow to the board, I don't know. But it's all, you know, just I want the information, but to me that doesn't make sense. But making this visual, it was interesting to discover that that was the case. So if we check and balance with each other, we understand better, we can educate with each other how to make things Work. So this company, by the way, they got the EFQM, European Federation Quality Award, in 1992 or something. And the guy who was the finance manager was the main person to process this, and he was the one giving this chart to me when I visited the first time. <laughs> so, but it's okay. We make mistakes, but if we can be looking at the mirror and understand and move forward. That's the whole point of it. And just, just a little story behind this point. So mission and customer orientation is important. And you need to have a measurable objective or it helps to know it's just like a map and where you are located. So you may have the quality cost delivery, safety morale, you know, something like that, you can add more to it to monitor it. Or you can monitor just one or two elements first and then develop the habit to get better and change it as time passes. So you have a scoreboard and have a glass wall to monitor the progress and then use that to discuss the problems and opportunities and come up with the skills to develop a plan better and of course, post the plans so that you, you can see better what are the red and what are the projects that correspond to the red area that you are trying to improve. Common sense, right? So this is my suggestion is not have it in someone's brain, but share it so that you all understand and work together for the common goal. So one project may be red and this uh, major red in the KPI what do you do? There may be a uh, owner of the project, Mr. ABC, but 
you may help Mr. ABC because you have a green project and you have some extra time. So having the, make, uh, having the information made visible, it can expose the problem better and you can work as a team, like a soccer team. And you can transfer skills or rotate the job and so forth for the best of the company so that individuals can benefit and the mini company can benefit. And as you move forward, share the accomplishment, lessons learned, and report the progress to the bankers. I call the boss as the banker. You are the entrepreneur. They are the boss who would provide the resource and hopefully they are providing the advices, right? Not just telling what to do. <laughs> and you report to the progress to the bankers with a monthly report, annual report. To me, annual report is important all the way everywhere. And maybe there's the personal career plan that you have. And, and the annual report is like a resume. You know, this year I've done this, before it was so, this is what happened, these are the projects, and this is what I summarized, the lessons learned, and this is the next project into the future. So that tells you how you manage your mini company. And over time you accumulate this, it becomes like a journey that you can share. And if the banker is not a good banker, this is the American way, <laughs> just bring your resume to some other bankers to sell your skills so that you can satisfy your idea. But you have to prove it, the reason of existence, what you can do, and the show a track record. More track record you have, the bankers may listen to you more, and there's a better chance for you to explore into the future, whatever that future may be. You can complain the situation, and you can complain the market technology bankers, but everybody does it. So you have to prove, given the difficult situation, how you manage it. Prove to yourself, I think that's important, and also to share with other people. So those are the basics. What's interesting here to me is that this is so basic, I shouldn't be speaking about it. <laughs> because if you think about it, if you hire someone, you hire someone to, this person should know the mission, should understand the customers, bankers, and so forth. He should be able to relate to what are the target and the project and execute the share and report back, right? So there's nothing new about it. And it's no practice, unfortunately, from my point of view. That's why I happen to be talking about this subject over and over. And, uh, and also the reason is that opportunity is there. That's my conviction. I've seen many companies transforming and moving forward. And I know Jacto here has been implementing lots of idea in the last two, three years. So it's, it's good getting better. But I spent the last two days walking around asking this question, that question. There are lots of interesting stories. But I don't go to into it, but maybe a little bit later. But there's always, always opportunity. And that's great because that also helps you to be excited about and be a part of the solution and hopefully not the part of the problem. <laughs> and if the company as a whole can have an environment understanding the principle, because the principle is fairly simple, easy. So if everybody, if everybody can practice it, the communication gets better. Because if I'm you know, outside or I'm the engineering or finance, I go to your area, I know what you're doing. You know, if it's a shop floor or the service, because the structure is the same. So in a way, if you learn the skill and practice well, you, are, you can move around to get more understanding of how the business is done. Not to say everybody should do it because your interest is more of a technical area or something else, but still, you know, getting to know more about how the business is run and prove you can gain lots of insight in this process. So that's the kind of um, idea I hope you can pick up from this today's uh, discussion. <laughs>